what is data lake so even before i start what is data lake uh, i just want to tell you a small story when i was a kid there is a very big factory in front of my house it's it's a bread factory where they used to uh, prepare bread so i used to have lots of questions in my mind daily morning i used to see lot of vehicles uh, enters into that factory uh, like bus lorry uh, van and two wheelers so i asked to my mom so why do these many vehicle gets into that factory because i know end of day i used to see the breads coming out from the factory but i don't know what exactly happened into the factory and then i i've been started asking my questions to my mom uh, what about these vehicles and my mom used to say since they are making this bread and they need all these raw materials for making that bread so they just used to buy all the stuff and then through these vehicles they will get that into the factory and i see even workers gets into the factory in a different uh, vehicle i used to ask why they do need this many workers to get into it my mom said they have to prepare the bread right so that's why they have need lot of workers to get into the factory so i ask my mom so why do we need a factory to make a bread because i know my mom can do it in the kitchen so my mom said it's just for you for your dad i can do it but then if it is for uh, like to the market to the city to the town and i cannot do that in the home there are lot of process that i have to follow so only if there is a factory we can able to do that and that's when i understood okay why we need a factory in first place and what all those vehicles are carrying inside the factory and then i asked what what exactly happens inside my mom said so first all these raw material go to a warehouse a storage place where they used to unload all these raw materials and then they used to uh, clean it and then they used to process it and then finally they used to start making the bread now i can relate the story with what exactly the data lake is so let's take this zomato app or uber app as an example and then we can start ex- understanding this data lake first of all why do we need the data lake i even then say what is data lake in the first place but i'll say why first and then let's go for what so i can even store the data so imagine i i want to like uh, i have a app a food booking app like zomato so i'm getting all these data from the app and i can store it in a database just like that and i can write a python code to read the data but that is so simple right why do we need a data lake in first place i can do directly like this as i told you my mom can do the bread in the kitchen but it's not it's not in larger quantity for the wider market right so we need architecture in a place and that's called factory so for the larger app like zomato or uber just like that we cannot do a a, a, a process in simple way in the simple architecture we need one such uh, giant architecture called data lake to process the data data lake consists of so many data layers and i'll be telling you each and every layer in detail in this video so data lake is a place where the complete dump of data comes into picture a data can come from mobile app a data can come from a web app a data can come from a file or data can come from a different databases right so it can be in any format and it can be in from any place from any source and when i say any format it could be audio video images media files or a text file right it it can be a log file a semi structured file see always we cannot think the data whatever i i i just use the app i just create account i just order my food all these data goes to as a one table in a one a file system or a database no it's not like that whatever you do with your front end with your application let's take this food booking app it has lots and lots of microservices like order is one microservice booking is one uh, microservice payment is an another microservice adding a food to the cart is an another microservice they split the entire service into small pieces and each of these pieces writes to a different tables to a different source systems maybe so the data can come from different tables different sources it not just the app now after all getting this data i have to dump it somewhere the very first landing area right so the data lake consists of so many layers so we know what is lake why the ta- the terminology they created as a lake because lake where all the water comes to a place dumping all the water and then we do process cleaning and then we send it to the different targets for the various purpose right similarly the data comes to a one place and that's the first layer of any data lake architecture is called data ingestion so we retrieve the data which is called ingestion you can use kafka like messaging queues or uh, active mq 
or you can write a normal python program to hit the api to retrieve the data you can write a jdbc program it whatever it could be so that is an ingestion layer so you are getting the data and then the next layer is you store the data in somewhere it could be a database it could be a file system if it is aws you can use redshift to store the data or s3 to store the data so raw data whatever the data you get you store assets audio is audio video is video text file text file so i'm not doing any changes to the data i'll just store assets to my storage layer so the first layer is ingestion layer and the second layer is a storage layer the next layer in the data lake is cleaning i want to clean my data imagine the user is sending uh, their name for example first name is in upper case and the second name is in lower case so i have to clean it to a proper case and they add some special characters to their name or they add some dot at the end they have a new line character we have nulls in the data so i have to create the rules the list of rules for the cleaning imagine you defined you created 10 rules that you have to always check in the data to clean it and you can use any technology again you can use spark you can use ai to do this or you can write a java python whatever it is some cleaning task you have to write in future you this cleaning task may increase now you have 10 rules to check for the cleaning maybe 11th or 12th rule can come into picture so this cleaning phase is where we are preparing the data for the next business processing for the next layer so clean is done and then the next layer of data lake is data processing here is where you will do all sort of business logics imagine so you get the raw materials for making the bread right which is ingestion and then you store it in a warehouse and we call it as data storage right and then you do cleaning so you get all these uh, raw materials right you have to clean that before even baking making the bread you have to clean the raw materials for the hygiene purpose and then you have to start making the actual bread with all the ingredients that's what the process that's what the business logic now imagine i have a zomato app or uber app i need to know total number of bookings today number of refunds today number of disputes number of fraud transaction so transaction so i am asking so a report like this so this is called the data processing so i have to join the table i have to use spark or redshift or i use snaps in azure or i use emr in aws or data proc in google or uh, google cloud or data flow in google cloud whatever it could be the technology is up to you i am just explaining you how the data lake architecture is formed So now once the processing is completed the next process the next layer is data governance so you have to implement the access management and security you know in the factory example i have a security who checks each and every id card to grant the access and even in the bread factory the bread manufacturing factory we do have lots of departments right a finance department guy cannot enter into the uh, baking department they should have the appropriate access now as a developer i should enable or disable an access only this particular developer should able to touch these tables or these framework they can only log in so i do all these kind of governance and security part so this is data governance and then the next part is all about data orchestration so i have to do orchestration what is orchestration in the first place you have to schedule the task right now imagine that you wake up in the morning you brush your teeth and then you have a coffee so this is your schedule and schedule is different from automation now when you wake up in the morning and you have to brush your teeth and the toothbrush could be the manual one or the automatic one that is up to you you do manual you use manual brush or automatic one but the schedule is same and then the next you need to have a coffee it can be an automated coffee machine or you can prepare your own coffee in a manual way so automation is different but the schedule should happen so who controls the schedule your brain so now imagine that i have so many jobs right so i have to i have to do process 1 process 2 process 3 or the storage should happen this cleaning should happen this process should happen this governance should happen so all these need to be get scheduled every day twice it should run all this then i have to schedule it i cannot go manually and sit and do all that stuff right so i can use airflow meg control m autosys there are so many orchestration tools and it's very important to us to learn any one of the orchestration so i recommend Airf airflow and airflow has given a free books to download and uh, see their uh, you can learn airflow with their book and i have given the download link in the description box of this video and the next layer is metadata management so what is metadata data about data imagine i just go 
to a new people, a stranger, and I'm asking, what is your name? Now, someone is asking to me, what is your name? I say, Gautam. And then the next question they're asking, where are you from? I'm saying, I'm from India, Chennai. That means, first I gave my name as a data, and then again they're asking another data based on that data, data about a data. Right? Now, you have so many jobs in your uh, production or development, right? You have to have a metadata about those jobs, which job completes first. Now, how to create the dependency? For example, you want to raise a refund. When you can raise a refund, only when you have done a transaction, a successful transaction, you can raise a refund. Without even raising a transaction, how can you go and make a refund, right? So, only people can raise a refund when they have done the transaction. So, there is a dependency. So, this refund has to run only after the transaction. So, these two jobs need a metadata. And then only I can able to create such a dependency stuff. Right? So, mark as dependency. So, I have to maintain all the metadata to, to see when the job completes, to track the job, to monitor the job. Right? So, metadata and orchestration hand in hand. So, what is the next layer? So, this is this is where I, I just said metadata management. You can write normal Python or you can use some framework to create the metadata management system. And the last layer is data analytics layer. So, within this, two departments comes into picture. One is BI, business intelligence. You can create a dashboard uh, for your uh, customers. Like you create a Tableau dashboard, a Power BI dashboard, whatever it could be. And, and or like it could be a data scientist team. So they get all these. So I give you all the processed information. And with that, you predict something by implementing some models, analytics, statistics, and you predict the next year sales, big billion day sales, something like that. So these are some of the seven to eight data layers, which is the core layer, which is very important in the data lake. See, there could be more layers too, but these layers, whatever I told you, starting from ingestion to analytics layer, they are important and they are core. As a data engineer and data analyst, you will be working in all of this layer or most of the time any two or any three. Imagine if you take a data engineer, we work on data storage layer, data processing layer, data orchestration layer and data met metadata layer. So we will not be working in governance layer, admin will take care of it. If you are a data analyst, then for sure you will be working in analytics layer, storage layer and maybe orchestration layer, metadata management. So it depends. But most of the case, you will not be working in all these layers. But knowing all these layers are very important. So this is what lake, data lake is all about. And sometimes people used to ask me, what does data lake house? It's a new terminology. See, with or without knowing, everybody in data lake, we use lake house architecture as well. So the question itself, difference between data lake and data lake house. But actually, if you notice, in day-to-day -day life, in our data lake architecture itself, we use lake house architecture as well. Okay, what is lake house? See, in data lake, we store the raw data in one storage system. It could be file system or a database. And then again, we take a copy of it and then we clean it. Again, we store it in a different database or a different table. And again, I will read that data for the processing. And then again, I will be storing it in a different table. So I create multiple copies of data. So what they did, so why we create this multiple copies? Because I want to do a data warehousing, the processing on top of these data and different layers. So I create multiple copies. What is exactly Lakos? So that means you do all processing in one storage itself. Don't create multiple copies. For example, I have my data in the database. You write a Python code to read the data, process it and store it there only. So don't create multiple copies. So that means you are combining the data lake storage and the data warehouse and we call it as a data lake house. But unfortunately or fortunately, every data lake project has a lake house as well. With or without knowing, we are doing it. Imagine in AWS, you have the data in S3 and I want to run some queries on top of it. So if you pick Redshift, Redshift is a uh, query engine come database in AWS. Then I have to move the data from S3 to Redshift. So that means you have the copy in S3 and at the same time you have the copy in Redshift. But instead, what I can do? Imagine I write a PySpark processing. Instead of doing it in SQL, I do PySpark. So the data will be in S3. I do a PySpark or Spark and then I will process the data and I'll be giving the output. I'm not creating copies of the data for the input. Or I can go for Athena or Hive. And that means your data will be still in the file system and you just use Hive or Athena to 
read the data from the file system itself and then you process it. So we are not moving the uh, data from S3 to Hive or S3 to Athena. The data will be in file system only. So I am not creating multiple copies. You are combining the processing and storage. And that's what in the modern data world, people call it as a data lake. But this is something we are already doing in data lake. It's all like people create all these fancy terminologies to confuse people. But that's a reality, you know. It's all like we do data lake goes in the data lake as well. All right. So that's what I wanted to tell you. So the, my agenda of this video is completed. So thanks for watching. And if you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. My Instagram and LinkedIn URL in the description box. You can follow me there as well. I make a lot of videos over there. And I do lots of master course in big data engineering and cloud. You can check my YouTube channel. And once again, thanks for watching, guys.